Hypoactive sexual desire disorder, HSDD, is more common than you might think. Our Brooke Slyer sat down with Dr. Pepper Schwartz to find out more. Today's guest is not only a researcher, but she's also a best-selling author and relationship expert on Lifetime's Married at First Sight. California Life is happy to welcome Dr. Pepper Shorts to the show. Women's sex lives is often a hushed topic of conversation, and some may even see talking about it as taboo. However, Dr. Pepper Shorts, who is a relationship expert on Lifetime's Married at First Sight, says a healthy sex life is important for women. It's a gift, and if there's something disrupting it, where you no longer feel desire, you no longer feel arousal. You've lost a lot of health as well as emotional health benefits. And so I just think it's something we need to think about and empower women to find what we call their spark and, and not lose this wonderful part of their lives. While male sexual dysfunctions are commonly discussed, the fact that women can also suffer from common sexual troubles or the more serious case of female sexual dysfunction doesn't seem to get much attention. Female sexual dysfunction is composed of four different kinds of problems, but the most common problem is problems of sexual desire. In looking for this lack of desire, there is now a programs that are designed to take a look and see if it is this persistent and distressed feeling that women have that their sexual spark is now gone and has been gone for quite a while and is affecting their sense of self, and often their relationship. Short says FSD affects women and their partners both in and out of the bedroom. Everybody goes through periods of their life where they're in stress, or maybe they're recovering from a major life event like having a baby. And sex life gets affected then, and, and that's natural and normal. But it's not natural and normal to have a persistent lack of interest in sex so that's the point where you say, okay, this is just not a passing thing. I've got something that's changed and I need to find out what it is and how it can help it. Although this may be a sensitive subject, she does offer some tips for how women can open up to their partners and even their doctors. You have to talk to your partner in a way that they don't think it's, it's all about our relationship or she's interested in somebody else or I'm not good enough just to make sure he doesn't feel like you know it's all about him. And uh, secondly, I think you need to go to your healthcare provider and say, look at, I do have this issue and I don't know if you're the right person to, to help me with it, but I really need a recommendation or referral from you. Or perhaps if you do know about this, you know, tell me what, what's available. The other thing is to go to findmyspark.com Take a look at the resources there, and you may also find a good direction just from that website, from other women who are handling the same thing, to the videos of doctors who will tell you much more about the syndrome, uh, to things that will help you decide if really you do have a physiologically suppressed desire, or maybe you're taking the wrong medications or something else that you'd want to think about. Schwartz explains this is a common issue and that most women are just dealing with it. This is new and they may or may not interpret their own symptoms correctly. So they really do need to go to a health provider who is a sexual medicine, either specialist or informed about what's available because what they don't and they shouldn't do is just settle for, well, this is the way it is. However, there are tools out there to help relieve the problem including one she highly suggests that women check out. Now there is a way to track this in a more methodical way with good resources. If they go to findmyspark.com, it's a really good beginning. Bringing you the best of California, I'm Brooke Slyer.